Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the third part in the Super Socket 7 investigation. What is the best graphics card? Today we're looking at 3DFX. Now, if you haven't watched part one and two, I'll put the links down below in the description. Especially part two is worth watching where I look at some of the NVIDIA graphics cards. The system is the same from last week. The motherboard is the DFI. K6 XV3 Plus 66 Revision B2. Processor is an AMD K6 3 Plus 400, but overclocked to 550 MHz. And for memory, we've got a stick of 128 megabytes of SD RAM. So what are we going to look at today? Initially, I will show all the graphics cards and I will just explain a little bit about them. Then we'll have a look at some benchmarks with an analysis. I will talk about any issues or any uh, special topics that are relevant to the 3DFX Voodoo cards. And at the end, a summary and a conclusion. And because we already have some results from NVIDIA, I'm going to compare the two um, and we'll make a decision when does it make sense to go with the 3DFX? When are you better off with an NVIDIA card? First card is the 3DFX Banji. This one is from Elsa. It is the Victory 2 and this card has 16 megabytes of video memory. Very interesting card. It's basically um, a Voodoo 2 but with a slight twist. In single texture games, this card will actually perform faster than a Voodoo 2, whereas in multi texture games such as uh, Quake 2, a Voodoo 2 will outperform this card. However, you don't need a dedicated 2D graphics card like with the Voodoo 2. This has the 2D part built in as one single chip, so there's a lot more integrated. So it just makes life a little bit easier. Um, Easier. The other thing worth mentioning is, is that the VGA output quality um, is better than on the Voodoo 2, so you get a nicer image, and it also has the 22 bit um, output color, output filter that the Voodoo 3 cards have. Um, what is that all about? Basically, uh, if you're playing a game in 16 bit colors, the uh, Voodoo cards, this one and the higher Voodoo 3 cards, have a filter which upsamples the colors and basically makes it look a little bit nicer. Now most of the Voodoo cards don't do 32-bit colors, so that's why 3DFX came up with this workaround. How, how well does it work? Well, it gives you basically an image quality that is somewhere between 16-bit and 32-bit colors. The next card we have is the Velocity 100. This is basically based on the Voodoo 3 2000, but it's got a few shortcomings. Firstly, it has less memory, only 8 megabytes instead of 16. And the other shortcoming is that under OpenGL and Glide, one of the texture mapping units is disabled. The card, however, has two texture mapping units on board. So with a simple uh, registry key, you can unlock that second texture mapping unit and turn this into a Voodoo 3 2000. However, you still have less video memory, only eight instead of 16. In terms of speed, the Voodoo 3 2000 is basically equivalent to Voodoo 2 SLI. So those who are interested in seeing how a Voodoo 2 SLI performs, just look uh, for this card in the benchmarks. And this Voodoo card is probably the most popular one. It is the Voodoo 3. And this particular model is the Compact Edition, the Voodoo 3. 3500 with a VGA output and it's got a, a TV output as well. So you don't need that analog VGA uh, dongle that the standard Voodoo 3 3500 needs. Um, very cool card and a lot of people use this card in Super Socket 7 machines. So um, we will definitely see how this stacks up against the NVIDIA cards. Small 
issues definitely with the cooling. Um, the uh, Voodoo 3 cards do run very hot. Um, the other issue is power draw. There have been reports that some motherboards are not up to spec. They didn't quite uh, build the power circuitry powerful enough. So if you're using one of these cards, double check that everything is legit. Because this card likes to run really hot, a lot of people do a cooling mod, uh, slapping various coolers onto the graphics card with various uh, techniques. And I've actually done a video. It's one of my earlier ones, uh, shot on a mobile phone, very shaky and poor quality, but it explains what you need to do. And this is basically an 80 millimeter fan. It's super quiet. You just need a rubber band and one uh, cable tie here, and that's it. Good to go. Just plug this in uh, to the motherboard for the fan, and it keeps your card nice, cool, and quiet. And just to be clear, I just want to mention it again, the Voodoo 3 is a 16-bit color graphics card only. For older games, that's not an issue, but newer games that do support 32-bit color, well, that's something you will have to decide, and that's definitely something I'll talk about in the conclusion. And then we have the Voodoo 4 4500. Now, this is based on a new chip from 3DFX, and this supports 16-bit as well as 32-bit colors. A lot of people say this is the card that the Voodoo 3 should have been because it um, addresses that 32-bit uh, color issue, which the Voodoo 3 simply didn't have. In terms of performance, this card is very similar to the Voodoo 3, so it's not record-breaking but it does add nice uh, color uh, color support with the 32-bit colors and it also supports uh, anti-aliasing so it has a 2x AA uh, built in which works through brute force I believe super sampling or uh, is the technology so um, quite expensive on uh, the performance so it needs uh, it will lower your FPS quite significantly and I have some benchmarks where we will look at just how much uh, impact that anti-aliasing has. And finally, the top dog, the Voodoo 5 5500. 64 megabytes of video RAM, but uh, only 32 can be used per chip. This is basically an SLI card uh, on a single board. Needs a, a Molex power supply, so it requires more power than the AGP interface can supply. Very, well I wouldn't say very, but hard to find and definitely not cheap anymore. Um, five, five, six years ago you, you could pick this up for fairly uh, low prices, but now these are really collector's items and sought after. And the question really is, does such a card make sense in a Super Socket 7 machine, or is it is it better uh, used in a faster machine? Anti-aliasing, it also supports uh, AA modes up to 4x. So the Voodoo 4 4500 was limited to 2x anti-aliasing. This card has the power and offers 4x anti-aliasing. So we will have a look at the performance figures, how much impact does that setting have? Before we look at the benchmarks, it's time to talk about compatibility and any issues I encountered. Firstly, I have to say, in terms of compatibility with games, the 3DFX cards are really reference standards. Uh, I did not run into a single issue, and there's a reason for that. 3DFX was the gaming graphics card um, back in the day. NVIDIA was still starting out and was the main competitor, but 3DFX was around a little bit earlier, so uh, a lot of gamers associated 3DFX with uh, gaming, and companies made sure that their games were compatible with the 3DFX cards. Especially the older stuff, when you look at the README files, there's always uh, uh, the 3DFX cards are always being mentioned and you often find 3DFX patches uh, either directly on the disk or available for download to add uh, 3DFX support to uh, games later on. Now that changed later. If you're looking more at the newer games, you will find references to NVIDIA as well. So uh, again, that's something interesting to talk about in the conclusion. 
In terms of compatibility with the SuperSocket 7 platform, the Voodoo cards are also excellent. They are basically AGP cards without using any of the AGP features. Back in the day, that was uh, looked upon negatively. NVIDIA and the other companies, they all jumped on the AGP bandwagon. 3DFX did not. But that is actually good for us retro gamers because the SuperSocket 7 platform has uh, potentially issues with the AGP implementation. The Voodoo cards are awesome because they don't need any AGP features and therefore you don't run into any compatibility issues. 3D Mark benchmarks didn't seem to like some of the Voodoo cards or had issues running the 3D Mark 2000 benchmark. It would uh, crash at a certain point and there were no new drivers. I, lose, I used the uh, latest reference drivers for each of the cards for all the benchmarks. So in order to get the 3D Mark results, I used uh, one of the, uh, it's called a third party drivers, the Amiga Merlin driver. So uh, a bunch of fans uh, basically tweaked the drivers and added some features and more compatibility. And with that driver, I was able to uh, complete all the 3D Mark benchmarks. But those are the only ones where I used the Amiga Merlin drivers. Um, all the other drivers are used the latest reference driver um, as were available. And one more thing I want to mention is there seems to be some issue with the Voodoo cards detecting your uh, monitor, especially an LCD monitor. I had two displays that showed that behavior, uh, a 19 inch ASUS monitor, as well as my VGA capture card. And you would basically, uh, whenever you, uh, after installing the driver, whenever you change the uh, colors or the increase the resolution, you would get an error. And the workaround is uh, really simple. You just have to go into the monitor options and disable the plug and play feature. Uh, and then you change the uh, colors or the resolution and the machine will do a reboot and then the driver will be installed correctly. So a uh, weird little glitch, not sure what's going on there, but the workaround is fairly straightforward. Okay, time to look at some benchmarks here. Just a quick summary of the system and you can just pause the video and here all the driver versions. So it, it was only for the 3D Mark benchmarks that I had to use the Amiga Merlin driver because the stock drivers wouldn't really work well for me. Okay, so the way I've uh, planned this presentation is firstly, we're gonna have a look at just the 3DFX cards. How do they uh, compare amongst each other? But then we're gonna stack them up against the NVIDIA cards. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because the charts uh, are just getting a little bit out of control. There, There's uh, so many uh, lines, so it gets a little bit hard to see what is what. Okay, so let's have a look at the 3D Mark results. Um, Quite a few uh, weird things. The main weird thing is the Voodoo 3 benchmarking a little bit less than the Velocity 100. I've got no explanation and I uh, tried it a few times but I kept getting the same result. So um, the big cards, the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5, again, uh, why is the Voodoo 4 faster than the Voodoo 3? There's just something weird going on with the drivers and 3D Mark. Um, between the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5, there's no difference, so definitely it's running into the limitations of the K6 processor. Let's have a look at 3D Mark 2000. Um, the main card that sticks out is this one here, the Velocity 100. And I can only, uh, the only reason I've got for this is the lack of a video memory. This card only has 8 megabytes and I believe that the benchmark will lower the resolution uh, because it runs out of VRAM and maybe that's why it gets punished and gets a lower score. All the other ones, look, there's really little difference. Clearly there's a CPU, uh, the CPU is holding things back. And the Voodoo cards don't have the TNL engine, the uh, transformation and lighting engine. Yes, I got it wrong in the last video. I kept calling it texture and lighting. So my bad. Transform and uh, lighting is the is 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 what TNL stands for. Okay, time to have a look at some benchmarks. GL Quake first up, the Banji 
starting with very playable 80 FPS, FPS but then quickly performance goes down. Then here we've got the Velocity 100. Um, this is with one uh, texture mapping unit. So this is, if you install a driver and you don't do anything, that's the performance you're getting. And if you edit the registry and enable the second team, you, uh, you get this performance so significantly faster. So this is a game that supports uh, multi-texturing uh, and here the second team, team U makes a big difference. So if you have the velocity of 100, absolutely, you'd be silly not to uh, enable the second team U in the registry. But note that only affects OpenGL and Glide games. In Direct3D, the second team U is actually activated, which is really odd. I'm not sure why they um, did that. Okay, let's have a look where the Voodoo 3 is. So basically very similar curve but the Voodoo 3 is clocked a lot higher but still even even the uh, even with that speed the performance quickly drops as you increase the resolution and here we've got the Voodoo 4 um, starts off a little bit behind the Voodoo 3 cards um, yep that could be the driver or just could be the architecture and loses performance fairly um, exactly the same as the Voodoo 3 and here's the Voodoo 5. Main difference is that the Voodoo 5 is a lot more powerful at the high resolution. But even at 1280 by 1024, there's a, a bit of a drop. Look, it's not much. It's around from, from 110 to 100. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. So it starts off a little bit lower than the Voodoo 3, but is able to hold the performance at the high res resolutions better than the other cards. Okay, GL Quake in 32 bit. Well, this is a uh, a fairly empty chart, only two cards support 32-bit colors, the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5 and just like before the, they all start off at the same speed but the Voodoo 5 just has more power to hold on to the performance at higher resolutions. What comes next? Quake 2! Uh, Banshee starting off very high, just uh, 65 FPS but then performance goes down quickly. We've got the velocity with uh, one team U and then with two team U's and look at that, that's beautiful. Even at 1024 by 768 over 60 FPS. So a very, very playable and it just shows that none of the other cards can do any better. So um, we've got the, that's basically the Voodoo 3 2000, then we've got the Voodoo 3 3500, the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5. So really uh, the processor is the bottleneck here doesn't matter what Voodoo 3 you have, any they will basically perform the same. It's just if you have uh, the Banshee, then then you're struggling a bit, or you, for whatever reason, decide to run the Velocity 100 with a single TMU. So what's going on here? The Voodoo 5 does a little bit better at the high resolution and 32 bit colors, but there's not much difference. So both both of these cards will run into into the CPU limitation before they can. Uh, really flex the graphics muscles. Okay, time for some Direct X gaming, Direct 3D. Incoming, here's the Banshee, here we've got the Velocity 100, there's no uh, two versions with the one team U, two team U's, because under Direct 3D both team U's are enabled by default. So we can we can see a huge difference between the Banshee and the Voodoo 3 uh, 2000. So when I say Voodoo 3 2000, that's basically what the Velocity 100 is. Sometimes I just, uh, my brain just switches between those two names. We've got the Voodoo 3 here, a tiny bit faster at the high resolutions, but really makes little difference. And then we've got the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5. The Voodoo 5, powerful enough to uh, do a straight line here, so it loses no performance at all, going from 800 by 600 to 1024 by 768 but really is that enough to justify putting a Voodoo 5 into a Socket 7 machine? I'm not sure about that yet, we'll talk about that in the conclusion. In 32-bit colors, same deal, the Voodoo 4 loses a bit of performance as you crank up the pixels, but the Voodoo 5 um, solid as a rock, doesn't matter what resolution you give it, it performs uh, at the same performance. Okay, now it gets tricky, we're gonna match them against the NVIDIA cards. So there will be lots of lines to look at. Um, I'll do my best to uh, try to explain it. 3D Mark, okay, let's just 
get all the cards out. Now this is a generic benchmark and the Voodoo cards had a few issues but with the Merlin driver, um, the Voodoo 4 and 5, they can hang in, there with, hang in there with the top cards and here we've got the other Voodoo cards a little bit, a little bit behind. But really that whole benchmark um, going from a, uh, what have we got here, a, a, a TNT to a, a GeForce 4 and there's only like a thousand points different so uh, very CPU limited and here we've got the 3D Mark 2000 benchmark and um, the Voodoo cards struggle because they don't have the uh, transformation and lighting engine and odd result here with the that is the velocity 100 I think that's because it's running into vsync issues so if you're into benchmarking 3D Mark 2000 you are definitely better off with the Nvidia cards ideally uh, one of the cards that have the TNL processor on board. Okay, GLQuake. Now I've tossed out a few cards, so with NVIDIA I'm just focusing on a few key cards. The TNT, TNT2 Pro, the 256 DDR, the Quadro 2 Pro, the GeForce 4 MX 460, um, which actually benchmarked faster than the GeForce 4 and I know now why someone lots of people told me that the GeForce 4 MX is basically based on the GeForce 2 so that explained why it was a bit slower than the GeForce 4 in the last video. Okay so TNT fairly uh, low performance and then a huge boost going to the TNT uh, 2 then we've got the GeForce 256 we can see a jump up here and that's where the uh, transform and lighting engine kicks in that is part of OpenGL so if you have a graphics card that has TNL OpenGL will take advantage of that and we've got the Quadro 2 Pro a little bit more powerful at the high end at the high resolution and same goes for the GeForce 4 okay that's Nvidia out of the way now it's time to look at the Banshee it's right about here so at low resolutions it's actually faster than the TNT but then quickly loses uh, performance and at the very high res resolution as a reversal the TNT is actually faster let's have a look at the velocity with uh, two TMUs oh sorry that's the velocity I'm getting confused now so that was the Banshee and then we've got the velocity with one TMU so a little bit faster than the uh, Banshee but not much and loses performance just as quickly where is the 2 TMU? It's right here. So this is tracing basically the TNT 2 Pro. So really neck and legs. So you can say that a Voodoo 3 2000 um, on a Super Socket 7 machine uh, tr really in this game uh, neck and neck with the uh, TNT 2 Pro. Let's have a look where the Voodoo 3 3500 ends up uh, over here. So more powerful than the TNT2 Pro and apologies to Nvidia fans out there I don't have a TNT2 Ultra I used to just overclock the card but look the TNT2 Ultra is a little bit faster so it's it's very likely in between the two um, if you ever see a cheap eBay auction on a TNT2 Ultra let me know I'm actually interested in, in getting one okay and then we've got the Voodoo 4 let's see where that ends up actually lower than uh, a lot of the other cards and where's the Voodoo 5? It's right over here. So we can see that the Voodoo 3 actually performs um, higher at the low resolution but then loses uh, performance quickly. So does the Voodoo 4. It's only the Voodoo 5 that is able to uh, be the top 3 dfx card starting with the 1024 by 768 resolution and then at the ultra high there's a, a small gap but the NVIDIA cards are able to stay in front because they have the transform and lighting advantage in, in OpenGL. Okay, 32-bit colors. Let's quick go through this a bit quicker. We've got the TNT, TNT2 2 Pro, GeForce 256, Quadro 2 Pro, GeForce 4 MX and here's the GeForce, that's the Voodoo 4 so that is basically once again neck and neck with the TNT 2 Pro and here we've got the Voodoo 5 which is able to uh, hold uh, hold the performance up to 1024 by 768 but then also loses performance and it's basically at low resolution it's ahead of the GeForce 256 and at the high resolution 
um, right up there with the GeForce 256. Not what you, not quite sure why the 256 loses that much um, perform. Well, it's probably because of the architecture, um, because the GeForce 256 does have the transformer lighting as well, but can't really uh, play out that card on this benchmark. However, if you've got a Quadro 2 Pro or GeForce 4, you'll get uh, quite a step up in performance. Okay, Quake 2, 16-bit, different game. Let's have a look at the results. I need a different TNT, TNT 2 Pro. Then we've got the GeForce 256, the Quadro 2 Pro, and the GeForce 4 MX. So all the cards with transform and lighting are one step higher than the TNT 2 and the TNT. Okay, let's have a look where the 3DFX cards end up. Here we've got the Banshee. A um, little bit faster at the low resolution compared to the TNT, uh, but at the higher re resolutions the TNT is actually a little bit faster. Then we've got the Velocity 100 with only one TMU. Um, yeah, not much has changed. It's a little bit ahead of the uh, regular TNT, but not much. Let's turn on the second TMU and look at that. The Velocity 100 becomes a much more capable card is a little bit ahead of the TNT2 Pro, which uh, basically offers very solid performance for both of these cards. Let's have a look where the Voodoo 3 ends up. Uh, not much difference. So it's running straight into the CPU bottleneck, but at the high resolution, it's able to separate itself a little bit from the Velocity 100 because it's clocked a little bit higher. Let's have a look where the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5 end up a little bit lower, and that's very likely an architectural or uh, a driver issue that they might have a little bit higher of a CPU overhead and therefore perform a little bit slower. Time to look at the 32-bit charts. TNT, TNT 2 Pro, GeForce 256, Quadro 2 Pro, and finally the GeForce 4. Once again, texture, <laughs> I said again, uh, transformer lighting engine kicking in, giving those GeForce cards a bit of an edge. Let's have a look where the... Okay, I'm missing a few results. Oh, of course, 32-bit colors. I keep forgetting that the other cards can't do 32-bit colors. So the Voodoo 4, just ahead of the... Well, not really. It's neck and neck with the TNT 2 Pro and a little bit stronger, the high, res high resolutions. And here we've got the Voodoo 5. So basically, the Voodoo 5 a shame it doesn't have the transform and lighting engine. It would have uh, made it a lot more competitive, at least on the Super Socket 7 platform. But you hear that often that you want to have a fast CPU paired up with the Voodoo 5, and that's why. Incoming in 16-bit TNT, TNT 2 Pro. And remember, incoming had bugs on, on all the NVIDIA cards, uh, newer than the TNT 2 Pro. So the only results we have are from NVIDIA. So here we've got the Banshee. Uh, that card struggles quite a bit, but still, incoming is a fairly uh, non-demanding game. Look at the Velocity 100. Um, straight up there with the TNT 2, but loses more performance as we crank up the resolution. The Voodoo 3, 3500, holds the performance a little bit better at the high resolution, but still, the TNT 2 Pro is ahead at the high resolution, then we've got the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5. And it's only the Voodoo 5 that is able to beat the TNT 2 Pro in incoming 16-bit at the high resolution. 32-bit colors, TNT, TNT 2 Pro, then we've got the Voodoo 4 and the Voodoo 5. So just like in the 16-bit charts, the um, Voodoo cards are not really much faster than the TNT2 Pro. It's only the Voodoo 5 that is able to uh, separate itself from the TNT2 Pro. Okay, here we're looking at some anti-aliasing. We've got the Voodoo 4 here. Without any anti-aliasing, we're getting uh, 800, 800 by 600 pixels at 32-bit colors. We're getting 98.6 frames. And if we turn on 2XAA, it basically halves the performance to a 52.3. Um, still playable, but in my opinion, not really uh, good enough. You want to have uh, 60 or 75, depending on your refresh rate of your monitor. Let's have a look at the Voodoo 5. Uh, we can see how 
how more powerful the Voodoo 5 is, uh, losing very little performance by going from no anti-aliasing to 2x, and you can even try 4x. So the Voodoo 5, basically you can get 4x anti-aliasing at a similar speed compared to 2x anti-aliasing on the Voodoo 4. But again, that's probably a setting uh, 47.9 FPS that you might not be happy with, and it's already a fairly low resolution. Let's look at incoming. We've got the Voodoo 4 here, going from 86 frames to uh, 48, and here we've got the Voodoo 5, losing very little performance with the 2x AA, but still dropping quite a bit of performance with the 4x AA. So even the mighty Voodoo 5, you don't get uh, free anti-aliasing only at the 2x setting. You can, we can fairly, with fair confidence, we can say that if you've got a Voodoo 5, that you can turn on the 2x anti-aliasing with very little impact. Um, but remember. That's 800 by 600. I haven't done any tests for 1024 by 768 or 1280 by uh, 1024. Very likely, uh, at that resolution, you might not get playable settings. So definitely worth uh, testing. And time for some DOS benchmarks. And really, looking at all the results, um, a bit of a waste of time. There's really not much interesting to talk about. Um, it's really only the uh, GeForce 4-type cards that stand out by being a little bit slower but look at that they're all, they're all performing uh, really well and very similar um, PC player benchmark at 320 by 200 same there's really almost no variation between the results at 640 by 480 again nothing interesting here to talk about a bit disappointed I expected a lot more uh, variation or something interesting to see in the data but they're all doing really well in Doom, the GeForce 4 cards are a little bit behind, but everything else uh, is the same. We can see in, in this game in Doom, yes, we can see that the NVIDIA cards, uh, sorry, that the 3DFX cards benchmark a little bit faster, uh, around the 142 FPS compared to the 136, 7, 8 FPS. But look, Doom um, FPS capped at 35 FPS with uh, VSync and DOS. Who cares? It doesn't doesn't make a difference but if you're into benchmarking then that might be reason uh, enough for you to go with a voodoo card instead of an nvidia card and finally we have uh, quake so let's have a look what's going on here same very uh, little to talk about they're all performing on the same level um, no difference really i can't really see anything uh, interesting in these results okay time for the conclusion summary and recommendations so firstly i will just talk about the 3 dfx card uh, and, and and later i will then compare 3 dfx with nvidia because um, that's a whole different animal but let's stay with 3 dfx first we've got the 3 dfx banshee um, cute little card if you get one for cheap price absolutely it's a good start However, in my opinion, you're leaving a lot of performance on the table. Um, I would skip it if you have the chance to get a Voodoo 3 type card. And what Voodoo 3, it actually doesn't really matter that much. Um, if you do pick up the Velocity 100, absolutely, the first thing you should do is hit that register, uh, registry editor and enable the second TMU for Glide and OpenGL games, but it doesn't really matter. As long as it's a Voodoo 3, you'll be very happy with the performance, um, as we've seen in the benchmarks in, in 16 bits, which is all that these cards can do. It hangs in right there with the TNT2 Pro, a little bit ahead actually, but there's very a little difference uh, between the clock speeds, so I wouldn't even consider overclocking these cards. You actually might consider underclocking because the Voodoo 3 3500 does have a tendency to run a little bit hot. Why not underclock it um, and look after your parts a little bit? The Voodoo 4, bit of an odd card and really difficult to recommend. In 16 bit colors, it's basically on the level of uh, Voodoo 3. Um, 
but it has the bonus of 32-bit colors. Now, the problem is games that support 32-bit colors have usually got excellent support for NVIDIA cards as well. So uh, I did say I want to just talk about uh, 3DFX in this part, but that's basically what it boils down to. Um, I simply can't really recommend the Voodoo 4 uh, over an NVIDIA card of similar performance that does 32-bit colors. It, it doesn't really make uh, sense to me. Um, but look, you might see that differently. Um, it's just when I looked at the games that only support 16-bit colors, they're all a little bit older, and they actually run really well on a Banshee or a Voodoo, uh, Voodoo 3. But the Voodoo 4 doesn't really have enough power to run well at 32-bit colors, especially at the higher, higher resolutions. And finally, we've got the top dog, the Voodoo 5 5500. Now, this card does have the performance to do 32-bit colors at higher resolutions, and it also has enough performance to do anti-aliasing. But just like with the Voodoo 4, so do the NVIDIA cards and you have a lot more choices and you don't need to spend a lot of money. The Voodoo 5 is going to cost you an arm and a length and it's going to be hard to find. And in my opinion, uh, putting a Voodoo 5 in a Super Socket 7 machine, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, it's, it's way too uh, overpowered and, and way too a special card to put in a in a Super Socket 7 machine with such a weak uh, processor. It's really uh, being held back and you really want to put it in a fast um, Pentium 3 or a lot of people build uh, Athlon machines or Win uh, Pentium 4 machines and use this card. Um, so there are a lot cooler projects you can do with a Voodoo, Voodoo 5. Or I would not put it into a Super Socket 7 machine and that's a card I just simply would not uh, recommend at all. So, which card to pick? Well, fairly straightforward. If you're removing all these cards, it leaves us with the Voodoo 3 cards. And it doesn't really matter which one. You might uh, be a little bit wary of this because it's only got, uh, got 8 megabytes of video memory. So that might be uh, a reason to look for a proper Voodoo 3. But that's my recommendation. If you're going uh, for a 3DFX card, and we will in the next section talk about uh, why you should pick a 3DFX card compared to an NVIDIA card. But let's say if you're going through a 3DFX card, um, a Voodoo 3 is the card I would pick. You should be very happy. You're going to get uh, decent performance, excellent compatibility with the motherboards, but also with all the games. So Voodoo 3, that's what I recommend. Okay, here we are. All these data, all the benchmarks, all the charts have gotten us to this point. Should you go with a Voodoo 3? Or should you go with an NVIDIA River TNT2? Well, a loaded question and there are lots of things to consider, but I'll, I'll sum up my thoughts in one sentence and then I'll explain to you what I mean. If you're into uh, older games that support 16-bit colors only or uh, support Glide, go with the Voodoo 3. If you're looking to play more modern games that support 32-bit colors, um, and you might want to play with some anti-aliasing and texture filtering, go with the TNT2. So that's basically my uh, wrap-up. 16-bit um, color games, there are a lot of them, uh, older games that, that do not have 32-bit color support. They will actually look nicer on the 3D effects. And you've got the Glide engine, and that's a very powerful argument. There are a ton of old games that support the Glide, en Glide engine, and they might look a little bit nicer, and they might run a little bit better, uh, especially on a low processor, uh, low performing processor as the K6. You want to have uh, an e efficient graphics API, and that's what Glide really offers. And you can even play DOS games, Tomb Raider, with the Voodoo Rush patch, uh, Screamer 2, for example. So there are a ton of DOS uh, 3DFX Glide games that you can play on the Voodoo 3. Newer games that have full 32-bit color support um, and support high-resolution textures and texture compression, that's where you want to go with the TNT 2. Um, if you're into anti-aliasing and uh, uh, 
texture filtering, hey, just go with a GeForce 2MX. Um, that card has enough power to start playing with those settings. And if that's not enough, you can just go with a GeForce 3 or GeForce 4. Still, let's talk about picking one card if I had to recommend one. Um, and that's where it gets difficult. Um, but I'll just explain my recommendation. Um, so if someone would ask me, look, Phil, what do you recommend? I've built my Super Socket 7 platform. Um, I like the flexibility of playing uh, all the games and slowing it down. What card do you recommend? And my recommendation would be to go with the Voodoo 3. And a couple of reasons. Firstly, compatibility issues with the motherboard. Uh, you won't have any with the Voodoo 3 because they don't use the HUB features. You'll have an easy life. Um, no blue screens, no crashes, um, no mucking around with settings. They just work. And that's worth something. Retro parts are, can be a pain in the, pain in the neck uh, to begin with. So if you can uh, have a simpler life and less issues, why not? The other issue is, Although you can run more modern games with 32-bit color support on the TNT2, these modern games often don't run well on the Super Socket 7 platform. So it's great that you can play expandable in 32-bit colors. And it's awesome that you can play uh, Dracon in 32-bit colors. But these games run at 40 FPS. So it's it's... The Super Socket 7 platform is not suited to run those games. Um, it's, it's the wrong choice. You're better off with a Pentium 3. The Super Socket 7 platform is awesome at playing the older stuff. The um, Star Wars game, Shadows of the Empire, for example, which has 16-bit and uh, supports, uh, doesn't support Clyde, but runs in 16-bit colors. And what's the other one? Uh, Rogue Squadron 3D. That one supports Clyde and is speed sensitive, so you can use the K6 the multiply and, and slow it down in software. So you, there are a lot more older games that run really well on the Super Socket 7 platform and the older games, this is where the 3DFX cards shine. 16-bit um, color colors games look nicer because of the 22-bit color filter. You get the Glide engine and you get the game, the awesome game compatibility. All the game developers back in the day recommended uh, so I made sure that their games would run on a 3DFX Voodoo card um, because you just had to, um, all the gamers uh, recommended to get a, a 3DFX Voodoo card. And it was only with the TNT and the TNT2 that things started to change. But by that time, the Super Socket 7 platform was already a little bit out of date. And the games where you would make the switch to an NVIDIA card they unfortunately just don't run well on the Super Socket 7 platform. So don't forget that before uh, writing, writing mean messages in the comments. Um, you have to realize this is not about 3DFX versus NVIDIA. This is about what is the best graphics card for the Super Socket 7 platform. Yeah? That's the important thing. And um, to wrap it all up between the two, my recommendation for the Super Socket 7 platform is go with a Voodoo 3. And that's it. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to look at a red contender. It is ATI, of course. Let's see what they are like. What are the drivers like? Um, can they perform as well as NVIDIA and 3DFX? What are the compatibility issues? Are there any? And should you go for an ATI card? We'll find out soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.